Welcome back everyone and thanks for watching this video which is the second of my comparisons between equivalent products offered by Saddleback Leather and Filson. The last video I did was very well received and in that video I compared the uh, Saddleback Leather Thin Classic Briefcase to the Filson 257 Briefcase. The final verdict on that was that even though the Saddleback piece was a very beautiful product, uh, it just wasn't uh, my style anymore and in terms of a ratio of practicality to cost, the Filson won out. So today, I'm going to do the comparison between the Saddleback Leather Overnight Duffel Bag and the Filson Small Duffel Bag that you see here. Now I mentioned in the last video that I think a lot of people were going to appreciate that comparison because the two brands, Filson and Saddleback, do get cross-shopped a lot. And I think people really did appreciate the fact that someone came out and compared apples to apples those two products. If I'm right, I think that this video is going to be even more well received just simply due to the fact that this particular piece is so much more expensive. Now obviously when you spend a lot of money you want to make sure that it fulfills every one of your needs and that you're getting value for money. Also if there is a much cheaper product, as is the case with the Filson Small Duffel, you want to make sure that that particular product can't fulfill your needs, also allowing you to save a little bit of money, or a lot actually in this case. So to start out with, I'm going to do an overview of the Saddleback Leather Bag. Now one thing that I really don't think a video captures is just how sculptural and statuesque this particular bag is. I mean, if anything having to do with menswear and men's accessories can be considered statuesque, I think it would be this bag. You know, the leather, everyone who knows Saddleback knows the leather is top grain leather. And because of that, it's incredibly rigid. I mean, this is not a bag that will uh, fall limply if there's nothing in it. This is completely empty, and you can see that it's just, it's this incredibly rigid structure. Now, if you look on the outside, you'll notice that there's quite a lot going on. So if I start at the top, we have the saddleback handle that's attached or rather, yeah, the, that is attached to this very substantial shoulder strap here. The same one actually that's on the briefcase. Turning the bag around, you'll see that there is basically um, you know, a briefcase magazine pocket. On the outside, you have two side pockets here. So one on this side, then one on the other side. And you can see that the bag is closed by three buckles on the front and two buckles on the side. And this really is the first of my issues with this particular bag. If you need to get into this quickly, like say you're going through an airport checkout line or you know, you're trying to sit down on the airplane and you just need to get something out quickly, this is not the bag to do that with. Uh, those buckles do take a little bit of time to undo and to do it constantly uh, does, get a little bit, uh, does get a little bit aggravating, to be honest. You know, second thing that you'll notice is the styling. Now, I don't think anyone's going to argue that this is a very beautiful, well-made bag. You know, whatever your thoughts are on how it looks, I think we can all agree that yes, it is beautiful. But then you get to, you know, is this your style? Now, in the last video where I did the Saddleback Thin Briefcase, I came up with the term uh, roughneck chic in the sense that, you know, I used to work on the rigs. And uh, people there do make a lot of money, uh, but they're not the type of people that use their money to go buy Louis Vuitton products, you know, or Porsches. They're very much, um, you know, Ford, King Ranch type of guys. And, and I could absolutely see them buying something like this if they wanted a serious piece of luggage. Now, when I first uh, bought this, I was just starting to get into to menswear and was just kind of finding out what I liked. And, uh, you know, all I could see was this beautiful leather construction. I don't think I really realized kind of what my style was and what my preference was. So I think as time goes on, it's sort of grown off of me. And, and this is not, again, to take away from the amazing construction on the bag. It's just that it's not quite my style. You know, the other thing that's definitely a little bit of a hassle is that um, it is so stiff. I mean, the same thing that makes it so structural, so statuesque, and, and so striking to people. I mean, when, when I do take this out, the few times I've taken it out, I get comments every time because it just looks unlike anything that's out on the market. But at the same time, that stiffness is really what, um, what makes it a little bit of a hassle to carry around. So beyond just making it difficult to get in, get into it, um, this is something that is incredibly heavy. I believe it weighs something like uh, 13 pounds. 
empty so it's very substantial and there's no give to this at all so if you want to pack it full you know you might get a little bit of a bulge here and strap it down on one of the the, the holes farther down the strap but there's not a lot of give so you're very limited in what you can pack into it and carrying it is incredibly tough so if this is something that you're going to have over your shoulder uh, it will bash into your legs if you walk with it. Uh, it will be heavy to carry if you're going to use your arms and so unless you you know that you're going to have substantial uh, trolley time or you know this is something that's going to be in your car just be aware that it is very difficult to handle now if I open it up you can see that you know it, it is quite a big interior so you know you've got uh, some pockets here on the side you got a bigger back pocket here and then you've got this main opening again you know it might look big in the video but if you're talking pair of shoes and a change clothes you're pretty much maxed out right there so if you look at you know looks or rather if you look at function versus form you know in my opinion even though I was very much won over by the form at first you know I've come to realize that the form really takes takes uh, over on the function in this case which is a shame because when I bought this I think I paid something like five hundred dollars plus tax and they've since raised prices and I think this is now north of six hundred dollars so it's an incredibly expensive bag for something that uh, really is more of a, a showpiece that you carry around rather than a bag. Now, having gone over the Saddleback bag, here's the much different animal, the Filson Small Duffel. Now this looks basically like uh, what the 257 would look like if you could transform it into uh, a duffel bag. So you've got the uh, classic tan Filson uh, 22 ounce tough canvas. Then you've got the brown vegetable tan bridal leather. And then you've got the uh, very solid brass fittings here. The zippers as well, uh, they say Filson. Just about make it out there. And uh, they're classic, you know, YKKs. So if you know what a Filson looks like and you see this bag, you know it's a Filson. Incredibly simple in terms of, uh, in terms of what it offers of storage. So you get this main pocket here and uh, you get an inner pocket which I apologize is a little bit tough but you get an inner pocket on each side so there's the saddleback bag you know one thing I want to emphasize though is just how absolutely perfect this particular size is so this is the, the small duffel and there are other brands that put out uh, small bags and and they're frankly they just look like oversized women's purses uh, the Filson medium bag, you know, uh, sort of to, to swing it back to them is, is really large. I mean, if you packed it full, you would not get it um, onto a plane as a carry-on. But this particular size is just, I mean, it's perfect. You can get uh, a weekend's worth of clothes and more in here. Uh, it's incredibly flexible, so it can be stretched out if you need it to be. It's made in the USA by Filson, so it's uh, guaranteed for life. Uh, it's incredibly durable. Um, I use this thing every single day. I mean, as far as, you know, bags, it may not be the most expensive bag I ever own. It may not be the most handsome bag I ever, ever owned, though it, it does look really nice. But, wow, in terms of practicality, I just, I, I don't think it gets any better than this bag. Um, $235, I believe, so an incredibly reasonable price for something that's going to last uh, essentially a lifetime and uh, it's guaranteed by Filson if something were to happen but just the practicality that you get with this thing is just off the charts so you know for me it's kind of a, a hands-down winner you know even though I was very taken by the saddleback that you see here at first having used the Filson it's just really no contest and when you consider that this one's almost a third of the price of the saddleback bag it just becomes very easy now people can also say well you know, they're not the same league. You, you can't make a fair comparison. But but I would say actually that that's wrong. You know, they're both the same size. They're both meant to be overnight bags. And so I think you can fairly cross shop them. Also, if you wanted to go um, up a range in leather bags, which I do plan on doing, you know, this is kind of my workhorse bag, but I do still want um, a leather bag to use. I just, I wouldn't go with the saddleback. You know, it, it's, it's very impractical. Uh, it doesn't conform very easily if you need to carry more. And, uh, you know, if you're going to spend 600 bucks, I think you can spend a couple hundred more and get something from, um, you know, a Gurkha, for example, uh, Glacier Designs. That's G-L-A-S-E-R designs.com. Uh, Gurkha is G-H-U-R-K-A.com. Uh, you can also 
you can also check out you know all kinds of resources um, so coach for example so there's just there's tons of choice out there beyond the saddleback that I think would be a lot more practical while offering the same quality so in conclusion here's uh, here's what I'll tell you if you want something that is absolutely going to going to turn heads and that you can admire and uh, and this particular style is your thing this roughneck chic then yes, get the saddleback leather. Um, it's incredibly well built. It's just, I find it's not for me. Styling wise and practicality um, is a little bit lacking given what I use it for. If you want an insanely practical bag uh, that does not break the bank, guaranteed a lifetime, uh, you absolutely cannot go wrong with this Filson Small Duff.